Mr. Armstrong, may I introduce to you Commissar Alexei Berishnikov. Commissar Berishnikov, this is Mr. Michael Armstrong. Mr. Armstrong, on behalf of the peace-loving peoples of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, I welcome you to Moscow and extend warmest of greetings to the American people. Mr. Armstrong, welcome to Moscow, fun city of Great Mother Russia. Thank you, and on behalf of my president and the American people, I wish to thank you, Commissar Berishnikov, for your warm and generous welcome. The American people thank you. And my president thanks you. And my family thanks you. So, thank you, Commissar Boryshnikov. You, you are very most welcome. And now to business. The proposals that your government have submitted are most interesting and form the basis for mutual understanding. My government feels that you seek unfair advantage and are once again threatening us with nuclear blackmail. Nuclear blackmail? <laughs> Far from it, sir. We merely feel that with each side possessing the power to destroy humankind several times over, it is imperative that we begin to dismantle this deadly arsenal. We feel that your government's massive escalation of the arms race is a threat in the free world. The numbers of missiles that the Soviet Union needs for its defense are not based merely on a threat from the Western capitalist nations. You might think that you have too many missiles, but the Soviet Union does not share your timid views. The United States, sir, is not and will never be timid. Make no mistake about that. If you cannot get along with the Chinese, it is not our concern. Cannot accept your provocative answer. Do not provoke sleeping bear of Russia. Do not try to intimidate me, sir. Your attitude is provocative. Do not provoke me. I will not be intimidated. Do not provoke me. I will not be intimidated. Do not provoke me further. Do not dare to intimidate me, sir. You are provoking me. Take it easy. Take it easy. <clears throat> Let's begin again. Please, can we not begin again? I am prepared to overlook this outburst. My president feels that a mutual reduction of offensive weaponry would be conducive to the easing of international tensions. I would like to compliment you on your most handsome suit. I must have the address of your tailor. You must be making joke to discuss something so frivolous when security of humankind is at stake. We would not be inclined to reduce weapons with the provisions for on-site inspections that you propose. Well, how, sir, can we be certain that mutual reductions have been accomplished without on-site inspections? Yet I am serious. Your suit is very well cut and of fine material. I am a close maven. 
What is Kornsmaven? This is not important. I wish to know if your new weapon system is to be included in agreement. We've had big floods in the Soviet Union and cannot let inspectors in until we clean up the mess. Oh, I'm sorry, we've not heard of this flooding. Uh, if you will allow it, we can send in engineers to help you. How can we be friends if I can't meet your tailor? Enough for our clothes! I will recall Taylor from Siberia. Flooding is a domestic difficulty which we can handle without outside interference. I was merely offering to help in the spirit of detente. Your attitude is not in the spirit of detente. How can you speak of detente when you have made it a dirty word? We do not want Yankee imperialists on Soviet soil. I've had enough of your lip, you Russian slob. Slob? Capitalist pig. You like suits? We will bury you in suits. Listen, you Ukrainian peasant. Peasant? Heard you like a fat lip. We'll put suits on our missiles and send them to you. You're asking for it, you rusky creep. Then you'll see suits. We will show you Keep suits. Keep it up, Turkey. Keep it up. You decadent cavalry. All right, that's it. You had it. Five, four, three, two, one, five! 